I think the only hope, really, is that we get visited by highly intelligent aliens that figured out a way to cross the gaps of space-time, uh, thereby not being limited by the, the speed of light as a, as a speed limit of the universe. As we say, speed of light is not just a good idea, it's the law. But <laughs> if, if you warp space-time, you can cheat that, as they do in Star Trek with their warp drives and things. So uh, if they, they would visit us. Now, here's, now you were depressed before. You, you don't know depression until what I'm about to tell you. So now imagine if they visit us in a spacecraft. What are we doing now? We, in the United States, we don't even have a spacecraft to launch our own astronauts. We're hitching a ride with the, we're buying seats on the Russian for tens of millions of dollars, okay? And what will that do? It will go into low Earth orbit where we will boldly go where hundreds have gone before, all right? That is the state of human space exploration at this moment. Now aliens come from the gaps of space and they land. Okay, I have two hypotheses, three. One of them is they, have already landed, but they accidentally arrived during Comic-Con. And, and no one could distinguish them from any other costumes that were being worn. And then they left because no one cared that they came. So that's, it's a, remotely, a remote possibility, but I'm, I'm allowing that in the probability of this. All right, so another possibility is that they took a good look at us and concluded there's no sign of intelligent life on Earth, <laughs> not worthy of their attention. A third possibility, there may be more, but these are the three that I carry with me, is that they are so much smarter than we are. And by the way, what would that take? Not much. <laughs> but what's the next closest animal to humans in intelligence? Chimpanzees, chimps. And what's the DNA difference? 2% tops? Yet, what's the, they, what's the most they can do? They can stack boxes and reach a banana? Okay, maybe they'll put up an umbrella, rudimentary sign language, maybe. Our toddlers do that. Our toddlers. So here's a, only a 2% difference in DNA, and the chimp is stacking boxes, but we have poetry and music and the Hubble telescope. So our hubris ends up saying, what a difference that 2% makes. What a difference that makes. Maybe that difference is just as small as the 2%. Maybe the difference between the Hubble telescope and stacking boxes is as small as the 2% indicates. Because now consider some other species, 2% beyond us, just as we are 2% beyond the chimp. What would we look like to them? They would roll the smartest human for Stephen Hawking, roll him forward and say, this one, is slightly smarter than the rest because he can do astrophysics calculations in his head like little Timmy over here who just came back from preschool. <laughs> Alien Timmy. Oh, look, you just composed your 12th sonnet. That's beautiful. Oh, you just re-derived the fundamental principles of calculus. Let's put it on the refrigerator door. Yes, that's what their toddlers would be doing because our toddlers do what the smartest chimps do. If aliens came and they had only that much more intelligence than us. The gap that is between us and chimps, and we have DNA in common. If they were only that, they could enslave the entire Earth, and we wouldn't even know it. <laughs> Maybe that has already happened. <laughs> and we are living our lives as though we are expressing the free will of the human species, yet we are nothing more than an ant farm <laughs> on their shelf. Maybe that has already happened. <laughs> and we are living our lives as though we are expressing the free will of the human species, yet we are nothing more than an ant farm <laughs> on their shelf. Maybe that has already happened. <laughs> and we are living our lives as though we are expressing the free will of the human species, yet we are nothing more than an 
ant farm. <laughs> On their shelf, ant farm. <laughs> On their shelf. <laughs>